and you'll see that layer one has already been put in and we're going to add in several more layers and then we're going to rename them in a moment. The biggest benefit of layers is that you can turn them on and off at will. This can be very helpful during the design process so that you can access the hardscape items even if they appear to be under some of the softscape items. Besides helping you design, it can also help you in your sales approach by allowing you to turn various parts of the project on or off, such as pavilions, arbors, driveways, patios, to give the client a greater understanding of what could be added or trimmed on the project. It can be also helpful for your crew on the job site to start with printouts of dimensioned hardscape uh, plan only with no visual distraction of the softscape. So we're, uh, we've, we've now uh, got our dialog box open and what we want to do is we want to start naming these layers so we'll remember what they are. And just by double clicking uh, layer one we can name this one overlay and then the next one we're going to layer two is we're going to call it grading and layer three, we're going to call it house or building. Layer four, we're going to call it landscaping or softscaping. Actually, we're going to call this first one, sorry, hardscaping. And then we're going to call the next one softscaping. And you can organize these any way you want, but this is sort of the way you would build a project as well. Um, although irrigation you might do sooner. So we're going to have irrigation as a layer, and then we're going to have accessories. And that might be like planters and furniture, etc. And then layer 8, we're going to have dimensions. The UVision 3D Landscape Creator software is also very, very good at doing dimensions. Be sure to watch the tutorial about dimensioning. After you've renamed all your uh, layers, you click back on Overlay because that's what we're going to do first, and click OK. So now we're ready to actually um, we're going to put the overlay in. And you'll find that working in layers is easy, but remembering to go to the right layer for the object that you're making is sometimes even a bigger challenge. In the end, though, it's going to be very, very helpful for you. Um, so you can import different overlays. Um, an overlay is really just a, merely a drawing or a CAD plan or even a photo of a hand-drawn plan that you import as a basis for tracing out buildings and putting in your grading plan. So go to the File tab up top here and click on Import and you'll see you can import a SketchUp model, you can import pictures, JPEGs, um, Google Maps satellite photo, and you can import CAD drawings. Today we're going to show you how to import a JPEG of a grading plan. So we're going to click on that and we'll get our menu box up, make sure this reads overlay and we're going to go right into uh, my desktop where I've saved a uh, grading plan and then I'm going to insert that. So once you've selected the the actual drawing, click next a couple times and finish and you'll be able to actually put it right into the drawing. Now use the drag bar here to enlarge it a bit so you can see kind of what's going on in the in the image. Now in order to get this correctly scaled you have to work from a known distance. So if you know this building is 20 feet here or this front step is is 18 feet um, then you're off to the races with getting this thing scaled. Uh, there's a button on the far right here. It says resize using known distance. 
If you click on that and zoom into your uh, image. Now in this particular CAD drawing we have the distance already set in. If your cursor is jumping from grid to grid just turn your snap off on the far left. Now click on 0 and click on 20. You'll get a dialog box up. Type in 20 feet. Click enter and now the entire plan is correctly scaled. You can still move it around the sheet if you want, that's not a problem. But now you have a basis for really uh, starting. Now, <clears throat> the, um, the grading has been included in this particular drawing. If that's the case, it's really handy because now you can go to the grading layer click on grading and then click OK. Now we're ready to just click on the terrain tab, go to contour lines and simply start tracing your your lines and right clicking them to finish. And you can go through them all and each time you have to push the contour button I'm not following the line too closely, but you might want to be a little more accurate than what I'm being here. But you can put in all your elevations, and we'll do that after we put our lines in. So I'll do just a couple more here to uh, demonstrate really the power of contour lines. Now if I were to zoom in on this, you'll notice something here. You'll notice the zero inches, zero inches, zero inches. So what you have to do is pick one of your lines as being your baseline. Say, so, okay, that's ground zero, if you will. And from there on, you're going to go up in a certain increment, depending on how your grading plan was set up. In our case here, to really demonstrate it, I'm going to use a two-foot differential between every uh, contour line. So we're going to leave the first one zero, click on the second one, go to our dialog box at the right, put in two feet, enter. You'll notice the number changes to two. You go to your next grade and we're going to change that to four feet. Everything is based on that ground zero. Next one of course will be six feet and the uh, Next one, of course, is going to be 8 feet. And then the next one will make it 10 feet. I think that was the last line that I drew. There, now our contour lines are, are all in. Now we're ready to put in a house. So we're going to go over to our house uh, layer. And we've got our building right here over to the building tab, click on house and build your structure. Now I'm gonna I'm just actually just gonna build it rectangular and click on it. Now if I click on perspective you'll notice that I zoom in here, house is a little on the uh, low side here so you can raise your house so that it is the uh, the proper elevation. So I'm going to go into my layers now and I'm just going to turn off overlay. You notice we still have our grade here and now if we click on the house I just opened up my uh, grading dialog. Now we'll just click on the house and our wall height is listed here at 10 feet. But let's just change that to 20 feet and press enter. And we've got our um, sort of walkout basement, if you will. Now you can, if you need to, if it was not located at the right location, you could move the house into a different location. 
and the grade simply envelops uh, around the sides of the house. You can still see the grade here uh, falling to the one side and the grade here falling to one side. So that's one way to, uh, to build your grades. By the way, you can turn this grid off here if you find it distracting here. You just go to settings, turn grid off there. And I can also at this point now just hide my um, uh, my grading layer. Click hide, click OK. Now I don't see those lines anymore. And now I can just begin to uh, do some of my hardscaping. Now one other cool thing um, about um, the grading tools in here, if you go back to terrain and you click on height grid, you can actually build a uh, oh, my hidden my grading plan is hidden so I've got to actually uh, show that again I'll click OK and you can use height grid which is basically like a rectangle tool right click to finish that up and you'll see that it has a number of uh, grid points. If you click on Edit Points, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little easier here. You can simply just drag up on the point and um, just do it visually if you want, or the measurement is shown here, or you can use it in the dialog box off to the side. But the point is that it's very flexible um, and you can work within points in a grid. Great for making planting berms and that kind of thing. Finally, I just wanted to show you quickly too, um, if you have to create pathways through these, uh, these berms, you can do that with the path grader. Um, click on path grader and then I would go over to plan view and decide where your plan or your path is going to go. Right click to finish it. Now if we go over to perspective, oh, I actually didn't put that in the right location. <laughs> I put it on top of the house, not the uh, okay. Put it right on top of our height grid. <laughs> and click into perspective mode. I'll zoom right in. You can see how we've built a trench right through it. Now all that can be edited through edit heights and uh, you can actually edit these points again much like we did before. So you can see you can use the slider tool here and it automatically will change the grade. You can also change the width of this channel uh, simply by uh, going back into plan view, click off edit heights, and now if you just want to go to edit points, you'll see now that we have, we've got our points here that you can just drag and drag open and I will show you this one over here as well. We'll open that right up through the berm. Click on to perspective and you can see now I've carved a, a trench right through this very exaggerated berm I might add. One other little cool thing I'll leave you with before we finish this video and that is you can take this shape and fill it with pavers if you want just by going to shape option copy the shape, then go over to your landscape plan where it says path, click on path, and go to shape options, go to paste shape,